So let's explore the lean transformation model. And to do that, I'm going to borrow a graphic illustration uh, from Toyota, the Toyota production system uh, that's been around for over 40 years. But what we're going to go through here is uh, different from that Toyota house. We're just going to draw that, borrow from that as, as a metaphor. And for uh, any house, I think you begin by building a, or you have a foundation. And this house is going to then have two pillars. like so, that support a roof. So that should look something like a house. I'm not the greatest artist. But a foundation, two pillars, and a roof. And what happened when a lot of folks tried to uh, learn from and sometimes just copy the Toyota production system, they defaulted into kind of a prescriptive implementation model. They saw all the different tools and techniques in the different parts of the house and said, let's go do those. Now, that can be effective in making a certain amount of improvement, and you can learn through doing that. However, I think there's a more effective way of going about this, and that's what we'll explore here in the next few minutes. Uh, so to describe this, let's start up at the top with the goals uh, of the system. So one of the reasons that we want to take a slightly different approach is because every situation that calls for transformation is unique. So we need a situational approach. I'm just going to write that. To say situational doesn't mean that it's just ad hoc. There are some basic principles and a framework that needs to drive it. So this is a value-driven approach. So we're going to determine our value-driven purpose, which you could also refer to as the true north of any situation in a transformation. And ordinarily, we'll address that with a very simple question, which is simply, what problem is it that we're trying to solve? The nice thing about that question is it's fractal. It can refer to the overall transformation, the objectives of an entire organization, a company. Um, or it can refer to the detailed work that takes place in the front lines by the value-creating workers. Now from there, we'll go to uh, the two pillars. The first one here is one that we'll call process improvement. So these are changes in the work uh, that we uh, do as part of any continuous improvement program, uh, whether we call it lean or something else. And in fact, lean is often mistaken as a process improvement program. And as we can see by looking at this as a house, it's much more than that. So in addition to changing the processes, changing the work, we need to develop the people so the people can actually work in these new ways and that everyone's continually improving their work all the time. So over here, we're going to put capability development. So defining how the work needs to be done, continuous improvements, developing people, everyone in the system, so they can be making those improvements on their own all the time. So these are the two pillars of continuous improvement. Then we're going to look here in the middle, and we're going to find people, in particular. We're going to focus here on the role of leadership and of management. So here's where we're going to find our management system supported and driven by leadership behaviors. Okay. So now it's starting to look a little bit more of a, like a house. There are people inside that are the dynamic making the system work and also supported by the system as well. And for the foundation, we're going to refer to the basic thinking, the fundamental assumptions and mindset that underlies the entire system, all the people in it, and that drive the transformation itself. That underlie or drive the transformation. One of the basic beliefs I have about how transformation works, or about how businesses work, or about how the world works, that underlie the transformation. And then I'll also add and constitute the culture. So the lean transformation model deals with these five dimensions. And in, in, in the course of any transformation, you may focus more on one or the other. But what we've seen in successful transformations is that ultimately you must deal with these five dimensions. Uh, otherwise, the transformation will be out of balance and it will 
fail. So what we can do with these now is actually turn them into a set of questions. Those questions become practical matters that we can address. The first we've already discussed here, which is what problem are we trying to solve? Again, what is our true north? What value are we providing? This will then establish a target condition, which will determine the situational approach for this particular case. Then we'll go over to process improvement. And the question we're going to ask there is, how should we, say how will we improve, how will we change the work, the value creating work itself? We know what problem we're trying to solve, so how are we going to actually change the work? Whether it's a, per whether it's a worker on the assembly line who's doing, putting, putting something together and having trouble, or whether it's something in terms that, that relates to how we're going to provide value for the customer, or some back office operation, knowledge work, how will we change the actual work? That's question number two, which relates then to this pillar. Then once we've, we're defining the way work will improve, and we want it to continually improve, that requires making sure that the people who do the work have the capabilities, the necessary skills to do that successfully. So this question is, how will we develop the people? And by the people, I mean the people at all levels who are doing whatever, whatever work they're doing at all levels of the organization. So that becomes the third question. So this is starting to build uh, a process whereby I'm solving problems with improved work process, processes, and then with people developed to be able to do the work in that way and to continually improve it as well. Not The proven doesn't stop right there. We'll go from there into the management system and leadership behaviors. Now, a lot of uh, change management uh, theories and approaches uh, begin here and focus here, uh, and I, we understand that. However, we also think that any discussion of leadership and management, this divorce from the work, uh, is going to be abstract and therefore of minimal usefulness, not practical. So now that we've defined how people needed to be, de be developed to do the work to solve the problem, now we can define specifically what kind of leadership behaviors are required and what kind of management system to put in place. So this becomes the uh, fourth question, which I will bring out over here, which is what leader behaviors and management system, and you need both of those, is required to support and lead work in this new way that we're transforming toward. Okay, what leader behaviors and management system is required. Then number five addresses the basic thinking and they ask simply what basic thinking or mindset, and at least for this pur these purposes, I'm using the words basic thinking, mindset, and fundamental assumptions underlie or drive this particular transformation. For example, is it mainly an implementation mindset? that I'm going to go do some uh, benchmarking and find best practices and come back and implement those. Or is it a mindset that's based more on science and experimentation? And what basic thinking underlies or dr and uh, drives this transformation and makes up the culture that ultimately we must also change. So through this simple graphic illustration, uh, these five questions, what we're finding is that rather than a prescriptive approach that focuses on tools to implement, organizations get, get to the same place much more effectively in a way that is fine-tuned and customized for their needs. Through an experimental approach, with, a quest, with questions to address and experiments to try. I hope to see you there.